about her, but but feel like she's a really um, almost family. Um, and uh, I, I really, there's nothing I can say that would do justice to um, the love that everybody has for Sadie. I know that I've only been around in a, in a little over 10 years, and she has um, always made me feel extremely welcome, uh, made me always giving me like far too much um, uh, positive feedback, more than I ever deserved, I'm sure. Um, but she's the most uplifting uh, person that I can imagine, and I really appreciate her for that. And I, I, I've seen her do so much in the time that I've known her in many, many different projects, and of course, been aware from the other people I meet that she's been doing that for decades. And I know that I've been an activist for a long time, but man, I burn out that, and sometimes I just like I just can't do it. It looks to me like they've been doing it for a long time with un unending um, uh, goodwill and love and positive nature, and um, I think she's just an incredible a role model for myself and for other people, especially young people today, who hopefully will follow in her footsteps and uh, continue to give their life to peace as well. Um, we're going, I'm going to invite a few people to say a few words. They know they do longer and better than I do. And, um, uh, but first, James, did you want to say a bit and then invite the other folks? Yeah. And then we'll open it up and anyone else that wants to um, introduce something about Sadie is welcome to do that. Um, yeah, what we're going to do tonight is I know a lot of us have good stories. So I would invite uh, those of you that know, know uh, Sadie over the years, if you could come tell, tell a short story, maybe a couple minutes, uh, maybe how you got to know Sadie, uh, maybe a moment when she inspired you, or maybe think about something in a new way. And I've been asked a few of you already kind of prompted the crowd a little bit, but I haven't talked to everyone yet, so I'm hoping some of you that I haven't talked to might want to share as well. I, I want to go ahead and start, though. I met Sadie back, uh, it would have been, I think, 2000, maybe. And at the time, I was in the middle of law school, incredibly depressed, and I was also working part-time as a minister of a very conservative church, a church I grew up in. I was a very interim minister. I was absolutely miserable because I had become convinced that Jesus was a pacifist and that the way of Jesus was peace. And I was at part of a church, ministering at a church, that did not have that expectation. And so I was doing my best to plant tiny seeds of as much as possible, not getting fired, but I knew it was not the place I was going to end up. Well, one day I saw a group of people protesting in front of the Gold Dome building, Classen, at Classen and 23rd Street. And I ended up standing next to the, this, 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 this lady and that day, and we got to talking. And by the end of the conversation, I was amazed that there were actually people in Oklahoma City who believed that their faith and peace were integrated. And so in the end of the conversation, I was saying, I want to go to your church. And Sadie kept saying, no, you shouldn't go. You need to grow your plan. Uh, but I did, somehow, I ended up getting invited to be a guest speaker there anyway. I didn't tell my old church about it because they would have been mad that I was preaching in a midnight church. But I, I spoke there. And the, uh, not long after that, I got fired from my old church, which was the best, most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. And so then I told Sadie, like, Sadie, I tried. They, they fired me. And I've been in that ever since, and this has been going on about over 10 years now. And uh, since then, Moses and Sadie both, uh, well, my son, he, he calls them my grandparents. And it's kind of the truth. My, uh, my, my uh, biological grandparents passed on some time ago. And so I claim Moses and Sadie now, and I'm sure a lot of, a lot of the others here do as well. So they're continuing mentors to me, continuing pe there are people that continue to make these things and challenge uh, they've also kept me sane during some really dark times. So I'm really proud to honor Satan and, and, and proud to honor Moses as well tonight. So who would like to go next? Uh, I think Matt is willing to speak, but he had a good idea, I think, to bring a chair and have um,
we can do that. Well, this is truly uh, an honor for all of us, Sadie, because I believe as I look around this room, and I've seen some people who've been in the peace and justice movements for lifetimes, decades. I have only known Sadie Mast since the middle 1980s, less than half of her life. So I'm gonna need some help up here. Sure, there are a few things that I can say because the Sisters of Benedict started the Peace House in 1981. And I know Moses and Sadie were there. And in those days, Reagan was the president and there was the nuclear arms race and there were the US military interventions in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. And there were refugees fleeing from those nations into the United States. And there was an underground railroad, or what you might call it, where it was illegal to transport Salvadoran refugees north to where they might be safer and finally get into Canada. I see Bob and Marge Delaney sitting in the audience, and they were participants along with Moses and Sadie and others whose names I don't even know. It might have been Ralph, uh, editor who's here, and uh, uh, taking the big chance to do the right thing for refugees. Uh, Joan Cornblit is here, and Joan and Michael are talking about people who helped people during the Holocaust to be saved. In its own way, what was happening in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras was, was a, a minor Holocaust for 100,000 people over the decade. And so the sisters were inspirational to me, and uh, Sadie has been an inspiration, certainly to Moses, for a lifetime as well, and they're a team. I um, want to say that uh, there were Central America weeks in those days, in, uh, in April, but at the time that uh, Archbishop Oscar Romero had been assassinated uh, in, in uh, El Salvador, and uh, the masks were very involved with that. And I'm not sure that there's ever been a meeting planning a justice and peace event in Oklahoma City that I've been to that Sadie and Moses have not been present uh, spiritually, if not actually present. Uh, she has been a board member of the Oklahoma Conference of Churches uh, through three different directors. I've been a board member also, which is an honor. And uh, the directors of those meetings always knew that there would be some announcements at the end of the meeting, which is sort of like, so Sadie, what have you got for us? And invariably, Sadie would roll out one or two or three things. And one of her great gifts, as all of you know, is simply calling people on the phone and saying, I hope you'll be there at the, this event. And you know, when, when Sadie calls, you go, right? I mean, that's, we all know that. I, I see nodding heads out there. And it, it is a tremendous gift, and it's a way of your personal bringing people together and making people feel as though they matter and this community matters. Um, on we go through the 90s and uh, of course uh, all of us were very frightened that there might be a war against Iraq because President George W. Bush, uh, Bush the lesser, was talking about that for more than a year and there was uh, an inspiration to have a spiritual walk for peace before this launch of this terrible war we were all trying to stop. And the meetings were over at Joint Mennonite Church. Tom Temple was a leader, but Sadie and Moses were there and others, and myself included. And uh, uh, through Sadie's connection, I think in the religious community and the Conference of Churches, on that day, which I believe was February of 2003, the war to the launch of the war to be in a month, uh, there was a spiritual walk for peace in Oklahoma City. That was Marge Delaney that came up with the spiritual walk. You see? And uh, on that day, uh, there were 2,500 people in that march. And it started down at uh, St. Paul's Cathedral and it marched down around the four corners of the Murrah Building bomb site. One bomb is too many. And on each of the four corners, a different religious leader spoke. And they were Christian and uh, Muslim and Jewish. 
the, the three religions of the book, the Abrahamic religions. It was very, very moving. And say, and Native American, thank you. By the way, I see Richard Whitman sitting here. And he and I are both not spring chickens. We've been around for some decades. And I'm talking about lifetime peace and justice activists, along with Satan. Um, now, I'm going to ask for those of you who are willing to share a brief anecdote about a time that Sadie Mast inspired you. Uh, well, I remember the time that Sadie Mast, and uh, you're going to do this right after I speak. I don't have too many more notes. The International Day of Peace has been celebrated on September 21st, and it was, has been called Pinwheels for Peace for a long time. And Sadie's always been involved and, and a part of that. Um, well, all of you know Sadie Mass. Um, many of you knew Sadie Mass before I did. And I'd like to ask somebody to, uh, if this court were long enough, I'd run out there like Phil Donahue. And Moses is going to speak. Is this going to pull all the stuff down? You think it's long enough if we? It's going to reach soon. Now we're talking. Okay, yeah. Okay, At the Oklahoma Conference of Churches, a pastor said, when Sadie gets a hold of you, she don't let you go. All I can say, I know. <laughs> There was a project um, that we got involved in, and Moses and Sadie helped us a great deal. George and I actually was receiving the funds. One of the things that I did years ago, uh, and did it for 20, 25 years, was bring things, world uh, fair trade items from cooperatives in Guatemala. And my friend Linda Temple and I started first with Women for Guatemala, and then it became Market Day. And one of the groups needed some help. And what they needed to really help them was a pickup truck. And we had a, we raised the funds to get the pickup truck so we could bring it, bring it to them. And when we finally did it, Batch and I and Mo Moses and Sadie, uh, we had to drive the pickup down and then all come back together. And we went to Houston to deliver it, where it then would be delivered to someone from Guatemala who was going to take it back down there. That was the most fun project I had ever worked on. And it was such a joy and a delight to get to know Moses and Sadie better. And we're driving down the highway, and we have the C CBs in the car from the the CD radio. Do you remember those things? And uh, it's what we used in the truck watch. And we're chatting back and forth. And we're turning around and I go, I see a sign and go, Galveston. And they're advertising fish. And I turn around and get on the thing and I say, Sadie, you want to go to Galveston? We, we don't have to stay in Houston. We could go down and get fish. And, and so we're chatting back and forth. And we, what we did was we delivered the truck to Houston. And we went to Galveston for the night. Mm -hmm. And we had a great meal, then toured and found out all the history and rode back. But more importantly, um, I got to know two people I love very much, a lot better, and have a, had a lot of fun. And we always said, you know, we got to go back to Galveston and you know, mm -hmm. love you. <laughs>
follow up, all the everything. You're, you're always there, and I'm very impressed. And I love you very much. You too, Chris.